this is Birch. Uh, here's a good question, and I think you've heard some of the answers to this in the interviews that we've done. But the question is basically, how much does where creators live influence their creations? So the question goes like this. It says, uh, Perch, since you've lived in and outside the United States and been involved in the comic industry for decades, I would value hearing your opinion on where a creator lives affects the content that they create. How where a creator lives, sorry. That jumbled sentence was my fault, not the writer's. Things like story, character attitudes, looks, etc., are they greatly influenced by where someone lives in general? Naturally, there are always exceptions. Well, there are exceptions, but the answer is uh, quite a bit. I think where the creator lives, and, and you see this in both the writing and in the art. So in the art, um, there's just certain styles you, you can kind of tell. And particularly since Marvel no longer seems to be enforcing any kind of house style, and they are getting more and more of their art from uh, overseas, you are actually seeing the influence in kind of colors and surroundings and atmosphere and everything else. Uh, heavily, heavily influenced by the location in which the artist lives. With the writer, it's a little trickier. And I'm going to make this uh, kind of more uh, generalized, maybe mean statement, and then I'll back away from it a little bit. I think that a lot of writers, um, particularly for comics, and having known and met several, tend to be, uh, yeah, let's just say introvert, <laughs> is, the, is the polite way to put it. And many of them uh, do not get out a lot. And I would say that their creations are heavily influenced by what they're watching on TV. So where they're living is less relevant to what they're watching. You can almost, if you, you know, look closely at it, you can see what creator, you can, you can tell what creators are watching and consuming in the work. Um, extremely strongly, some more than others. And this, this works sometimes positively and negative. I've mentioned before, and I feel like I beat up on him too much. Uh, Kieran Gillen, who uh, does the Eternals right now, is about to be on Immortal X-Men. Um, he is uh, heavily influenced by Game of Thrones. It is clear in his work. Um, he's still a good writer. I think he puts out good stuff. And I think being influenced by what you watch or by where you live is not a negative. It's not, it's not necessarily bad. It's bad if you can't ever escape from it, but it's it's not necessarily bad. Um, same thing. I mean, clearly, at some point, Bendis was heavily influenced by Joss Whedon and by the West Wing and uh, shows like like that, uh, Sorkin shows and and Whedon. I, the, the dialogue comes out um, every now and then. I talk to a creator who uh, figures out much much later that they were influenced by something. I. I We'll speak to a creator, I, I'll kind of, I, I don't know if it's, I should say anything or not, but was anyway, was heavily influenced um, by the Lord of the Rings movies, the ones, uh, the Peter Jackson films, and didn't particularly like them, but years later realized that the dialogue and kind of the structure of the stories was heavily influenced by those films. And, you know, it, so the, these things kind of creep into you. But, sorry, you asked about location more than, than movies, and I went off topic. Um, I definitely think you, you see different regions. I mean, people who live in Japan or Korea, the stories they write definitely have a, a deep flavor of the culture of the area. I think manga in general, and I, it's easy to overlook this in a manga that's become very, very popular in the U.S., but if you delve into kind of deeper areas of manga, you get a lot of Japan culture and Japan kind of you know, sensitivities in the writing. Same thing is for the uh, Korean market. I think that, that Asia, definitely you see a connection between the writer and the artist, uh, the creation, and, and where they live. And, and at times, some of the creators have gone and lived in Europe, and you get these storylines. I, I, several comic creators have considered it almost a badge of honor to go to a different area. And then to take what they're seeing and what they're living and they're, what they're experiencing and bring it into the work. Uh, there's been a couple manga series that uh, the, the creator kind of proudly does an arc where the character is traveling and they're traveling. And so they're, they're trying to connect that their life to their work. It often comes out pretty authentic. It comes out, uh, I, I don't know, exciting. It's like you're seeing this person's experiences come out in the comic. In the U.S., I'd say it's, it's not as much, although... I, I don't know. I, I'm either imagining it or, or or not, but I can kind of tell a difference between the writers, you know, say for Marvel or DC, who live on the East Coast versus the West Coast versus the South. There are subtle differences in the stories that they write and the the pacing and other things, but it, it is harder. In many cases, it's because they're playing with uh, house characters; they're not playing with their own. And uh, but 
you know, take Nancy Collins, who we interviewed on this channel. And, and actually, if you haven't heard that interview, I recommend you go check it out. It's in the playlist there. Nancy Collins, who, of course, did a pretty amazing run of Swamp Thing, uh, one of my favorite runs of Swamp Thing. I, I personally like Nancy Collins' run on it much more than Alan Moore's. Uh, but I understand that's heresy to say, and it's not always about comparing two creators against each other. I just really liked what Collins did. And one of the core things that she did is she made the environment, uh, the bayou in this case, and, and you know the, the characters and everything else, she made it a character. She made it, 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 it it's, it's hard to explain unless you read the work. And then definitely if you listen to the interview, we talk about this actually there where she talks about, you know, you have the Swamp Thing, you have Abigail, and you have uh, you have Louisiana as a character. I mean, Louisiana is is as much a character in some cases as Swamp Thing is. And it, it to me, it, you know, it tells a really rich, really enjoyable story. I don't know what it is about Louisiana. I mean, right now, Scotty Young is doing something very similar uh, with, uh, with Strange Academy in terms of bringing the location. But Collins, of course, lived in that area, had that kind of Southern Gothic horror uh, style that she was able to bring to the table. And it, it works. It, it comes across as really, really good. And so I, I, I don't know. I, I, find it, um, I find it great, the kind of stuff she does. And I think that uh, you know, it's a classic example of what you're asking, just where you live in back the story. In that case, absolutely, yes. But I think there's been uh, creators who lived in, like, say, Philadelphia, lived in Baltimore. You get kind of that that general area. Um, you've had writers who live in uh, San Diego. I mean, look at some of the image creators who lived in California, and you could, you could see it in their work. So I absolutely think the location of where they live does impact. Um, I also think that if the creator is maybe not, you know, the most social, <laughs> doesn't go out that much, then you, you get the, the shows. I, I think we're living in a period in part because of COVID, but this really picked up about one year ago, and we're right in the midst of it now. We've got about another year, uh, both when these plots finally kind of shake out. But the, uh, the lockdowns, the people trapped in their houses, it almost caused people to lean in even harder to what they were watching on TV. And, uh, and, and in cases, I, I don't know, I feel weird about it because every now and then there's a scene or a moment that doesn't just feel like it was influenced by, say, Ms. Maisel or, you know, Mad Men or something like that, but it was, like, directly ripped off. Like, the scene is, uh, if you, it, 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 it's, it goes beyond homage into theft, <laughs> in many ways, in my mind. And, uh, I, I mean, I always wonder, with comics, is it just because people, the writers, people inside of it assume that comics are so small and so niche, nobody will ever notice, or it just doesn't really matter, or do they even realize they're doing it themselves? I don't know. Uh, I think, but when you get a creator like a Mark Millar or an Alan Moore or Grant Morrison at times, uh, certainly Nancy Collins, Rachel Pollack, um, you get creators who really start to weave in their environment into the comics they tell. I think it's really magical. I think it, it, the story just rings a little bit more true, and I think it uh, it's it's great stuff. So. I would definitely, I would definitely go and check that out if I were you. Uh, but great question, and um, I'm curious what you, the audience, thinks about this at this point. I, do you like? Does the location as a character matter to you? And I have this theory a little bit that if you read a lot of comics, if you, you know, you're, you're 10, 15, 20 years into your comic read, you've read, you've read at this point thousands of comics. I think the people in that state tend to care even more or, you know, or not, maybe not care, but be attracted to the location as a character even more because you get tired of kind of, you know, it's a city, it's probably New York, but there's people flying around and here they are in New York and there's a bunch of buildings. I don't know. There's, I, I went and recently reread a bunch of amazing Spider-Man and, you know, sometimes the, some of the creators lived in New York, sure, but New York became... I don't know, less of a character and more of just like, it was like Metropolis City number 12. It, it, it didn't have any real flavor to it. And I often wonder, in Marvel in particular, since New York is such a, a an area for them, why more of that doesn't come into the picture? Um, you know, I also think that you've seen a group of writers come out of the Portland area, and there is a kind of a common storytelling, or, although because several of them were kind of acolytes or in Bendis' close circle, how much of it was them copying his style versus the location? I, I don't know. But I'm curious if you, the person listening right now, how much does location matter to you when you're reading a comic? Do, does that play into things? Do you like to see kind of these unique environments? 
What, what's on your mind? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for the question and thanks for listening.